All right, let's continue. What is the universal gravitational formula? You should be able to write it out. There it is. That tells you between any two masses, there's a force of attraction. The constant g will be given to you. But I would suspect that the way they would do problems would be like this. You would have to figure out by ratios, and you would set f1 to f2 equal to d2 squared over d1 squared, because everything else is constant. And you'd probably have to find answers by doing a ratio like that. And the same thing would happen with the Coulomb's law. What is the satellite formula? Here's your one stop, everything you needed to know. If I have a satellite going around the Earth, all right, I need to know the following. It's in circular motion. So I can write mv squared over r. m is the mass of the satellite. v is the orbital speed. r is the distance between centers. I set that equal to m 4 pi squared r over t squared. Again, mass of the satellite. And this is now in terms of r. And that's found by substituting the orbital speed for a v, 2 pi r over t. Next, you set it equal to the universal gravitational formula. And r is the distance between centers. And you can also set it equal to um, mg at that point. But m would be the mass of the satellite. g would be the value of g at that point above the Earth. It's not 9.8. Memorize it. And you'll have to do every satellite formula. Next, what is the gravitational potential energy? <clears throat> Now let me review this one time. If you have any graph of force versus distance, to find the work to go from one distance to another, it is the area under the curve. All right? Now that's always force versus distance. Now what does the graph look like of force versus distance when a mass is moved from the surface of the Earth to infinity? Well. If I lift a mass up to infinity, just keep that sucker going, that's the formula. That tells me the force varying with distance. So if I plot F versus R, this is the graph that I get. Now if I want to go from the uh, radius of the Earth out to infinity, how much work does that take? And the answer is, it will be the area of, under that graph, from uh, the, the radius of the Earth, and let's pretend it starts right at the first little point there. And so I'll take that area under that graph, there it is, out to infinity, and I have the uh, potential energy, the work done to take it away to infinity. And there's the answer. You memorize it, memorize it, go over it till you know it well. Um, and that tells you that area from there to infinity. And of course you can find a, another area from there to another height h if you want to. We've looked at that. Now, here's the one thing that's a little bit of a complication. They choose infinity to be the zero reference line. So if I raise something from zero, from the surface of the Earth to infinity, that's how much energy it takes right there. That's how much work it takes to go up to that infinity, uh, that zero reference line. Therefore, at infinity, we have, if you will, like this, uh, energy well, and I'm going from the surface of the Earth, getting out of this well, and at the top of the well is zero. Therefore, the um, gravitational potential energy at the surface of the Earth is negative g m e m over r e. And at any other height, it would be g m e m over r e plus h. And it's the negative. You're removing it from the energy well.